demo. The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. Hey, welcome back. It has been a month since the, since the last T Tuesday update, and pretty much all I have to show for it is the We Are Coders. The second lecture in the Hyperspace Academy HSA 101 lecture series is now finally out. Um, and, you know, uh, last December, I promised it in January of 2021, and I barely made it. It came out this past Sunday. Uh, uh, but as a result, I have really no worthwhile news to report about progress on the T2 tiles, which is very sad. Uh, um, but I will circle back to the at the end of this video about my plans for two weeks from now, when it's time to really get serious and get back to T2 stuff. But since my head was full of it uh, today, uh, all of this video production stuff for the HSA uh, video. And since, you know, since seven years ago, uh, how do you do your recordings up till, you know, a couple of months ago when Abhinav was asking the same thing, this is like the number one question I get, you know, how is it that I make these videos, uh, that mix together stuff and so forth. So today I am going to break it down, uh, into, I hope, completely clear uh, pictures. I mean, I give people the high concept a lot, but nobody ever actually makes one. And <laughs> I was so oh, why not? Uh, uh, so I thought I would actually try to go through it at a fine enough grain detail, and in particular, talk about some of the non-obvious little uh, problems and tricks that make it look better. Uh, uh, and that's what this one is going to be about. Uh, how to make max screen video. I call it max screen for reasons that'll become clear. It's like green screen or blue screen. Uh, it's something like that, but it has different advantages and different limitations. Uh, uh, all right. So the basic idea is that we're going to be grabbing uh, the workstation, computer, laptop screen, whatever it happens to be. Uh, simultaneously, we're going to be recording live a video of the speaker. Uh, and then we're going to put them together somehow so that it's still possible to see what's going on in the screen content and the, the speaker does not look horrible. Uh, um, there's a lot of limitations on this particular idea that I want people to know up front so they won't be disappointed when they think get excited about using it and realizing it won't work for them. So there's limitations of two kinds. There's the I limit, fundamental limitations of the ideas and of the idea. And then there's just more specific limitations of my workflow. So in particular, the idea limitations of Mac screen is that it affects content design. You can't just take any screen content and expect this to work. You have to design the content knowing that you're heading for a uh, Mac screen. And similarly, you need to control the set where you're recording the stuff. You can't just record it anywhere and have Zoom remove the background for you. Uh, um, I mean, you know, software has moved on since then. So uh, if you don't have control of the content, if you don't have control of the screen appearance, in effect, and you don't have control of the set, this is not going to work. Um, beyond that, the workflow limitations, the way I do it, it involves post-production. You record uh, stream separately, you put them together. Afterwards, that means it doesn't, what I've got doesn't apply to live streaming. People could probably figure out a way to do a live streaming version of it, but this is not that. And I do all my stuff on strictly Linux only. I'm sure there's plenty of people that could explain how to do it with, uh, you know, you have to pay for it tools if you want. Uh, um, so that's, I think, the limitations. I think the easiest way to start to get into it is to show how I came to develop it. So we'll start with some a little history. Uh, so back in around the end of the 19, uh, 2010, thereabouts, uh, there was a lot of discussion about teaching computer science uh, to in, in grade school and so forth. And, you know, there was a big push for it. And eventually by 2013, uh, um, you know, once it reaches the president, then you know it's been circulating under the hood for quite some time. Uh, and in fact, it had. And in particular, there was a program called New Mexico CS for All, which was uh, 
a, fu a grant funded by the National Science Foundation to build out a teaching structure so that uh, the, the people that were working on the grant would teach high school teachers how to teach programming, and then the high school teachers would turn around and teach programming in high school. And uh, I got involved as part of uh, one of several uh, faculty members that were producing content for this remote uh, so it would be hands-on because the high school teachers would be at the high schools, but it would have uh, remote content, video content, and so forth. Uh, um, and just to make sure we remember, uh, the material based, this material is based on work, so including the entire concept of the Mac screen thing uh, was kind of, you know, supported by your tax dollars. Well, uh, a National Science Foundation that led to all of this getting happened, led to me being uh, recruited to make some content. So. My uh, attempts began in December uh, of 2012, and, uh, you know, I was going to try to use green screen. I had never done it. I thought, you know, I looked at only one or ten of the million YouTube videos, even back then, on how to do this sort of stuff. And I got a, a green screen and whatnot, and I tried to do it. And so this particular, the NMCS for All Programming is Modeling video uh, is green screen. Uh, uh, and it was, I did it with a tablet and it was handwriting and so forth, like, kind of like Khan Academy was, at least at the time. A and, you know, it looked awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got hair going all over the place, and and green screen has this terrible problem that it it can't render you know fine details very well because basically the way it's working, green screen is trying to make a very nonlinear decision on each pixel. Are you part of the background or are you part of the the foreground based on color in this case, in color green, blue screen, various other kinds of keys keys all do the same thing, and you know if it gets it wrong or Get, get, you know, it just chops through a pixel. Uh, it makes this very nonlinear decision, and it looks terrible. And so I said, you know, I'm not going to do that again. And I started to think about it, and it was like, well, uh, you want a more gradual transition. Instead of a key that says yes or no, foreground, background, there ought to be something where if the foreground and background are similar, they would kind of be all nice and gentle, a gentle arrival and then transiting over. And that's when I got the idea of saying, well, suppose Suppose we just took the maximum value of each pixel. If the background was brighter, take the background. If the foreground is brighter, take the foreground. And then we, if we can arrange to make the background dark, it'll fall away. And so by the next video, uh, which was the Demon Horde Sort video, uh, that was my first attempt at doing this Mac screen idea, where instead of having a key, green screen, blue screen, that's a black behind me. And it's just picking the max. So wherever my screen grab happened to have uh, light colored stuff, green, red, and so forth, that got picked up and the darker stuff got picked up by me. And, you know, look at all that fluffy hair. Uh, you know, uh, green screen will not do this on its best. I mean, maybe, you know, Hollywood green screen where it's, they're shooting like 8K and then they can mix it down. But, you know, this comes for free. Uh, uh, again, as long as you can control the set and you can control the content. Uh, um, so at, at that, in that first video, I hadn't really caught on to <laughs> I was going to all lay out, so my slides were like normal slides for a talk, uh, and they therefore they stomped on me. But then by the next video, which was the New Mexico CS for All one on hill climbing, I had gotten the idea of you know just push the content to the left side of the screen uh, and leave room for the uh, speaker to go in there. And that's how Mac Screen came to be. So uh, um, <coughs> the basic rule is. Everything should have a dark background so that it will not win in the pixel by pixel max. So you want very dark or black backgrounds for your slides or whatever the screen content is, and you want a uh, very dark or black background for behind the speaker uh, uh, like that. And that's why you need to be able to control the screen content and the set. Uh, um, and let's see here. Uh, uh, did I, did I, I missed it. Okay. Uh, um, so, 
here's what the world looks like to me <laughs> uh, uh, as I look at you. Uh, uh, there is the, uh, the the camera over there. There's a, a ring light around it. It's turned, it's turned on now, but it was turned off then. Uh, uh, here's the microphone that's sticking just out of camera range underneath. Uh, uh, and then up here is the monitor that shows the content that's being screen grabbed. And, and this thing down here is part of the uh, weird coder stuff, and it's not part of the general purpose. Uh, um, uh, Mac screen idea. If you want to know more about that, go see the uh, uh, We Are Coders video. Uh, um, and, and so that's what it looks like ahead of me. Uh, here's a closer look. Uh, yeah, so in the in the We Are Coders video, I was using a teleprompter, this home homemade little cheesy thing that I did with a, uh, a little cheap HDMI, you know, watch cartoons in the back seat monitor. Uh, uh, you can see the camera uh, through the glass back there. Uh, um, but you know, I'm not using it for this. I'm not using it for this one because you can tell it's a teacher's day update. Uh, um, and so that's what it looks like in front of me behind me. Uh, it looks like this, it's black curtains. It's just blackout curtain panels that you buy. These, uh, ones are fairly velvety. They do a pretty good job soaking up the light, but as you can see, there's, they're not magic black they're just dark and so as part of the set design we try to get as much light on the speaker as possible so that we can stop the camera down we can reduce the exposure on the lens so that the black curtains become very very black uh, and again that's being able to control the environment for that um, so okay and uh, this is what I've got a monitor to my right. Uh, that's now that this is a relatively new feature. Got a, uh, a monitor so I can kind of see approximately, uh, what the camera is seeing. Um, and there's, I guess, I don't know if you can see it up there. That's Eclipse in the background, which is running Java code, uh, which is doing this, the visualization stuff, the, the slide stuff. Uh, um, and so, uh, when it's time to make a video, I start recording this. This is the screen grab. Uh, it's just a, a script using FFmpeg. People can use anything they want, obviously. Uh, start that up, start the camera recording. So now it's happily recording away the entire screen. Uh, um, and I record the take and the camera at this point puts you know, the video on SD card. So I actually have to move it over and plug it in and get the files off the camera that way. But then, uh, I take the screen grab, which has been recoded to take up less space. And I put it in the directory along with the camera stuff. And I fire up Kden live, K D E N live. Uh, I'm using an app image version so that I can get a newer version. Version 2008 is reasonably new. Um, and, uh, Caden live. And, you know, like all these nonlinear editors, it can be pretty confusing when you get start using it. And I can't be a tutorial on Caden live here, but I'll just sort of show you how it goes. Uh, um, this is what it looks like. You got the timeline where you put your clips and you move them around and so forth. Uh, you go up to the project bin and you say, give me, uh, uh, select your two files. The MP4 file is the one from the camera. The MKV file is the one from my screen grab. Bring them both in. Uh, Caden Live grinds over them and makes, you know, little proxy clips and whatnot. So that takes a moment. And then we stick them on the timeline. The output small or slow, that's the screen. The 2020 blah, 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 uh, with not the correct date because my camera doesn't have a battery. Uh, um, and this is the trick right here. Uh, I'm clicking on the upper track, which is the screen, and I'm inserting a composition. Specifically, I'm inserting a composite and transform composition between the tracks. That's the way Caden Live views things. Other nonlinear editors take other approaches, have, have graph models and so forth. But this one, if you want stuff to interact from one track to the next, you put comp uh, compositions between them. Uh, so we do that. And now we have a composite and transform uh, effect uh, taking place between the two tracks there and then here it is we go find the compositing entry uh, in the thing uh, which is currently set to alpha blend you can see it there and we change it to lighten which does a max lighten means a pixel by pixel max uh, um, in Photoshop the equivalent is I believe uh, lighten only a blend mode lighten only which again does a max uh, um, so we change it and 
there I am. We are now composited together. And that's really it. That's the fundamental, uh, you know, raw ingredients of this idea. Uh, um, and then it's a matter, well, and then uh, you have to slide them around and get the audio and sync and a whole bunch of other stuff and trim the ends and, uh, you know, put title cards in and so forth, group it together, group clips so that you can handle it as a unit once you get the uh, audio aligned and so on. But that's the real basic idea. I made a <coughs> title. This is just the demo of the little clip that we saw at the beginning of this update. This is the process of making that. And and uh, create it, align it, add some things, and so forth. I'm not going to spend time on it. Uh, this is more Caden Live stuff. Uh, um, and, and there it is. Um, so uh, uh, that's it for that basic part of it. Now, there is a second level, in the advanced story to this. And that is, uh, you know, so what, what we just saw will do the basic idea. But there's this other stuff, right? You see me pointing at the screen. You see me pointing at things on the screen, not just with the mouse. I mean, I, sometimes I point at stuff with the mouse when it has to get details or when I'm really interacting. But if I'm just talking about points, I'll you know pick the high one, pick the middle one, pick the low one, you know, come in and look at it and so forth. How do we actually manage to get that to work? Uh, um, that is not immediately obvious that that's the way it would look. And if one tries it, uh, if you just sort of say, oh, I got some black curtains and or, 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 you tend to run into this problem. It looks weird. So I have a demo, and we'll do that, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, um, so, okay. Now, if I had any skill with Blender, which I do not, uh, I'm going to use OpenSCAD to show this model. But, all right, so there's, okay, here's me, right? Uh, uh, I'm sitting in an empty space. Where? Let's get the camera. All right. So the first uh, point is that, uh, so I, we've got, you know, the camera is basically off my left shoulder, so I'm in a, a three-quarter uh, stance so that I'm splitting my attention between the screen uh, ahead of me, essentially, and looking to the camera to my left. So that wants the camera to essentially be somewhere off my left shoulder, about like that. Uh, um, and we then need a, a curtain behind me, the, the black screen. Uh, uh, so there it is. And now... What I can't do, if I could use Blender, I could actually show you the view through the camera, but I don't really know how to do it uh, in, in OpenSCAD. But, you know, it's something like this. So, you know, we would, the camera view would be basically like this. And, you know, it puts the uh, speaker on the right-hand side of the screen, which is what we want, and leaves a big black area on the rest of the, the screen, which is what we want. Uh, uh, now, let's get the screen in here. Oops. Oh dear. This font is too tiny. Another nice thing is by putting the microphone under the camera like this, when I lean towards the camera, you get a more intimate sound because I'm closer to the microphone. Uh, um, and that ends up being nice. Okay, so there is the screen, uh, you see. And I am looking at the screen, and that's what we're going to see on the screen. So this is the big trick, that essentially you want to have the camera essentially at eye height, or maybe a little bit lower. Um, and so if you think about it, now what the camera is going to see looking through here, any time I am looking at something that's actually above the camera in the set, it'll look like I'm looking up. And any time I'm looking at something below the camera, it'll look like I'm looking down, which I am. So we've set it up so that the camera is about halfway up the monitor that I'm actually looking at. And this, you know, it wants to be a fairly hefty monitor. This is a 24-inch monitor or whatever it is, so that you can actually see the, the eyes moving and so forth. But really, that's the whole trick. It doesn't have to be that accurate. It kind of surprised me how easy it was when it all came together. And what, and then we already have, uh, we have a microphone, but we've already seen the real microphone, so that's not what we need. Uh, you know, we got a microphone uh, in the same direction as the camera, so that volume makes sense uh, relative to the camera. 
and that's it. So the idea is, you know, make the camera about eye high, have the monitor be partly above camera height and partly below it. And so the fact that I am looking in this direction, uh, which is really a very comfortable turn to me, but when it's on the screen, it looks like I'm gesturing at something that's like all the way 90 degrees away from me, and I'm not, but it reads. Uh, so that's the trick. That's the demo. Uh, um, and then it's just a matter of, you know, trying to get as much light on the egghead and as little light on the uh, black background so that you get a nice crush to black and it doesn't show up. And I've got problems with that now. You, you'll be able to see a little bit of curtain down here because uh, I have to mess around with light some more. That's it. That's how to make Mac screen video. Um, it served a particular purpose for me, for the, the needs that I had. Uh, uh, and it looks half decent uh, like that for a total investment of curtains. And of course, now I've got lights and whatnot, but I didn't originally. So that's it. Uh, any questions, as they say, you know, put them in the comments below. If they, if they make sense, I'll see what I can say about it. You know, and again, this is just my homemade DIY made that I solve specific problems back in 2000. 2012 and 2013 that I've been using ever since. All right. So, uh, two weeks from today, uh, um, it's about going back to the 2D printer and the copier, and I've decided I'm going to do what I kind of wanted to do but was afraid to because I was trying to show results quickly, which is to take this whole idea of build plate that I developed for helping the 2D printer idea out and generalize it out and say, you know, actually, this is a useful thing for membranes, creatures, organisms in the grid to have some of this plate around them even when they're not in the process of making copies of themselves. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to develop general plate that we can put that things will put around themselves to kind of reserve space and give themselves a little buffer and give them a cleaner, calmer environment to do their work within. And Therefore, by their holding space, that means someone else won't be able to hold space. And if we can get there, one, two, three, four, we'll have a space war, and the place will be filling up with these, uh, you know, claims on various bits of space. And we'll see how it goes. <sighs> Thanks for checking in. Uh, uh, if anybody uh, does, you know, make a Mac screen video that, that they put up, you know, let me know. I'd love to see it. Uh, um, thanks for stopping by. Hope everybody is okay. See you in two weeks.